Last time we were dealing with light, weren't we, Rehan? We were dealing with light? Yes, we were. And, and <laughs> do you think that's appropriate today? I think it's very appropriate. Yes. Why is that? Because uh, the light of the Exactly. So we were looking at the light that is emitted by hydrogen. We were looking at the gas hydrogen, and if we put an electric current through a tube containing hydrogen, then we would get this uh, emission spectrum of hydrogen. This emission spectrum of hydrogen was very important for shedding light, as it were, on this model of the atom. The emission spectrum of hydrogen, which we looked at already, was able to provide the evidence to support this model, this planetary model, the idea that in the middle you have the nucleus and orbiting around this nucleus, very much like the planets of our solar system orbit around the sun. So this is why it's referred to as the planetary model. But here at the atomic level, Niels Bohr proposed in 1913 that we have the nucleus at the center and electrons going around. And in the case of hydrogen, just the one electron orbiting around the center. And when a photon, which is light energy, strikes a particular atom, a certain frequency and wavelength can push that electron from its ground state to a higher energy level. And from what we saw last time with the light that was being emitted from the hydrogen tube, we saw four colors, red, green, blue, and violet. And even though here we see this line looking kind of bluish, what we saw was a green line. from this energy level here, which is, this is our first energy level, this is the second energy level. When a certain photon of the right wavelength and frequency, with the right amount of energy then, strikes this energy level, an electron is excited up to this level, and when it comes back down from this level, it emits light that is red. And the same happens when we go from level 2 to level 4 and that electron comes back down, it emits light that is green. The line emission spectrum of hydrogen, it is this really that provides the evidence. Because science is not about having some model or story or whatever it is, and then just saying that this is so because we say it's so. What makes a scientific truth, as opposed to some other kind of truth, a belief maybe, is the need for evidence. So the Bohr model of the atom was based on this evidence, the line spectrum of hydrogen. The line spectrum of hydrogen demonstrated to us that the electron can be at energy level 2 and when it's excited from le energy level 2 to energy level 3 and then it goes back down, a photon is emitted and that photon corresponds here to red light. And when it goes from energy level 2 to energy level 4, you get a photon, a packet of energy that corresponds to green light in the visible spectrum, what we can see with our eyes. So when we put that diffraction grating in front of our cameras and we took that picture we saw, highlighted the red light, the green strip, the blue strip and the violet strip. And all of these correspond to transitions from energy level 3 to 2, 4 to 2, 5. 2, 6, 2. All of these lines make up visible emission spectrum of, of hydrogen, also referred to as Balmer series of lines. We IB students don't have to characterize this by the name the Balmer series, but we have to be able to explain where the four lines come from. So this is called the Balmer series. Then suppose the transitions are from higher levels down to the n equals to 1 level. Then we get lines, yes, photons are emitted, but these cannot be seen by our eyes. So we will need some other thing to detect this photon that's emitted, and this radiation is usually in the UV part of the spectrum. Similarly, if we have a transition to the N equal to 3 level, then that is going to give lines in the IR area of the spectrum. All of these named for various researchers. These energy levels have been found that the difference in energy between 1 and 2 
is this much. And as you go higher and higher up, the difference in energy between levels becomes less. The difference in this energy here can be calculated. How much energy is used to move from level 1 to level 2 or from level 2 to level 3. Using a simple relationship, of course we can know the frequency of red light, of blue light, of green light from the fact that we can see them in the visible spectrum. And we can measure the frequencies of any of these bits of radiation. And then there's Planck's constant, which is constant. So the amount of energy that is emitted in each transition can then be calculated from the frequency of the emission multiplied by Planck's constant. In HL, we will be developing that in topic 12. I tell students, your explanation is energy strikes the hydrogen gas Electrons are excited from the N2 level to the N6 level, and those electrons go back down to that level. A photon is emitted that corresponds to violet light. Or if it's this five level, blue light, green light, red light. And these are the four lines that we see in the line spectrum of hydrogen.